good doctors. So, the op-ed yesterday. Oh, the op-ed. Yes, yeah, so tell us about it. So, there's an op-ed yesterday in Space News by the good doctor, and I do agree with his content and appreciate his contributions to um, thinking about the space industry, space commercialization, but I disagree. So, um, suppose we don't know who the good doctor is. Uh, Dr. Audrey. Uh, he's, uh, he's another professor in uh, space economics and space theory. And so, uh, what he put out in Space News is um, a commentary on how the FAA continuing to be the regulator of commercial space transportation is inefficient and ineffective. And I couldn't, couldn't disagree more. And he cites a lot of really good reasons, but the problem is there's one really big reason why it's important that they are there. And that is... Uh, by the way, the FFA means... Uh, Federal Aviation Administration. The people who control the planes. Why it's important that the people who control the planes are involved in the space and the space economy, George is about to tell you. Oh, so planes come from airports. Space, you know, rockets come from spaceports. The people who run the airports then, air control, currently run the spaceports and space control. That's a pretty short summary, but that'll do. Um, so no, the, the reason I disagree with the article, the biggest reason, is because the FAA's additional steps of regulation oversight provide necessary checks and balances, and I know layers of bureaucracy that most people hate, but we can't have a Challenger or a Columbia again, and we definitely can't have one of those coming from a commercial space provider of space launch services for tourists. You blow up one deca millionaire or one billionaire, the space industry goes back five or 10 years. And I'm too old to wait for that. And that's why it's good that this these extra bureaucrats, this extra layer of regulation is in place. You need you those mean safety balances. professionals, yes. not bureaucrats, safety professionals. <laughs> tomato, tomato. I mean, even the act of slowing it down helps add to safety. Even the act of knowing that these safety professionals or bureaucrats, and I don't mean that in a negative way, I don't mean bureaucrat or bureaucracy in a negative way, even that extra layer to make people pause and consider that a, a, another set of reviewers are looking improves outcomes. It's, it's no different than the conversations people are having now about how we need to get more freedom molecules, more US LNG to our allies in Europe so they can turn off the spigots from, you know, the crazy guy Putin. We can't build LNG export facilities faster. There's a reason. LNG export facilities are multi, multi-year efforts and chemical wonders of the world. Of uh, LNG stands for liquid natural gas, by the way. Yeah, that's right. Um, and we, we produce a lot of it. In fact, we are number one in production and export of it in the world. Um, and we want to produce even more so that we can send that liquefied natural gas to offset the natural gas that our friends in Europe would like to not buy from Russia anymore. But anyway, in the same way, we can't just throw up a new LNG facility this year. Even if every duck got in a row, and ducks don't like getting in rows, even if every duck got in a row, you're still looking at 18 to probably realistically more like 36 months to get them up and running. It's the same thing because one mistake at an LNG facility, one leak, one explosion, and the whole industry is impacted. We all pay the price. It's the same with spaceports. It's the same with private launch. It's important to have checks and balances because there are certain things that one mistake is all it takes to negatively impact an entire industry. So I, I respectfully disagree with the op-ed. I didn't read the op-ed, but I've heard George talk about the op-ed, and oddly enough, we wrote a paper called uh, The Principles of Selling Time and Space that talk about um, space tokens and time tokens. And so eventually, when we get up to space, 
you're gonna need to generate space tokens and time tokens. Space being physical distance uh, and time, meaning you run such a safe shop in orbit that you have plenty of time and plenty of space. So you're gonna trade your space tokens and your time tokens for premium launch windows, premium orbits, and the only way you can accumulate these space and time tokens is because you're safe. And so I agree with safety as a as a necessary, it's not a necessary evil, it's just a necessary factor for having a healthy, safe, robust, and resilient space economy. So again, respectfully, respectfully, George disagrees with you. Uh, I, I'm impartial to this other than I'm a big fan of safety. So that's about it for the moment. We're continuing our trip to see Rogue Space here in New Hampshire. They build robots in space. Uh, Rob robots in space that live free or die, by the way. That's the, the, on every license plate here. 100%. And uh, robots in space are also super safe for a variety of reasons. The number one reasons you have robots in space is for safety. Because, you know, you lose a you lose a $100,000 piece of equipment. It's not a big deal. You lose a George. It takes forever. It takes at least miles. 21 to years to make a George. East, New Hampshire, one thirty two. Whereas Brixie doesn't take but a moment. So uh, that's it for the moment. See you guys in the next episode. Uh, peace.